inverse functions. We have one function here. I want to find the inverse. Now, in order to find the inverse, it's this negative one idea. It's function negative one. Negative one means inverse, just so you know. Um, I don't like to leave it in f of x form. I tend to do this. I tend to switch it to this. I look at, the, here's the function, but I change it to a y equals instead of having f of x. There's a reason. To find the inverse, it's actually fairly simple. All you do, let me just write it and let you see if you could figure it out. That's the inverse. Take a look at that. See if you could figure out what I did. All I did was switch the x and y. You see how I just switched them? There's your inverse. Now you just got to simplify your inverse so it's y equals. So how to get y by itself? Add the 8 over. So I have x plus 8 equals 2y. Next, I divide by 2. So I now have y equals x plus 8 over 2. Now, could you divide both pieces by 2? Yeah. Yes, or you can leave it like this. I'm OK leaving these like this. So here's how you technically would write it. The inverse function of x equals x plus 8 over 2. Basically, I, I change it to a y, and then I change it back. Is that OK? Yes. Y is a little bit easier to write than f of negative 1x. Okay, this is saying the inverse of x, the function is this. Let's try it again. g of x is this. Let's first change it to y equals. Okay. Next, I want to find the inverse. So all I do is switch x and y. And then I want to get y by itself. So I'm going to minus the 3 over. So I have x minus 3 equals negative y. Can I put a negative 1 there? Yeah. Yeah, it can help some people. So to get rid of that negative, you divide by negative 1. And you now have, now this one I could actually simplify, is negative x plus 3. And then change it back to the inverse. And we're doing g. So the inverse of g is negative x plus 3.